Most people want to be the best ones, the best students, the best engineers, the best entrepreneurs, etc. But not everyone knows how exactly to be the best or how to get there. Recently, one of our students, actually one of our future students and one of you guys, one of our YouTube subscribers, did give me a call and said, you know what, I watched a lot of your videos, I enjoy your content, I'm very thankful to you for that and I'm going to change my life and change my career with your course. But I want to ask you one question before we get started. How can I become the best student in your school? And I was like, whoa, this guy is already amazing. And by answering his question, I pretty much answered the question, how can you become the best QA engineer in your company? So I think this video is going to be very helpful to all of those who are already working as the QA engineers and for those who are planning to become one soon. And by the way, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you could thank this guy for sharing so much useful content on YouTube. And also, I'm going to leave a links for our Instagram and Telegram communities below this video so you could join them and you could learn about all the perks, updates, discounts about our school and courses. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a QE engineer, lead manager and a senior engineering manager of SDAP. In the past, I've been in the world of a QA for about 10 years. Lately, I've been mentoring and preaching QA for about six years. I helped hundreds of people to become QA engineers from scratch or to improve your existing skills. So if you guys ever have any questions about software quality assurance or how to become a QA engineer or how to find a job, feel free to give me a call by visiting this contact us page at codemify.com. Now let's get started. Let's think about this process in three pieces. Before the course or before the QA job, after you received an offer. Second one, during the course or during the job. And the third one, afterwards. So first one, pre-education or before you get started. This is my favorite part because during my days, about 10 years ago, when I actually signed up for the course, I was so afraid to be one of the dumbest people in a class because I was a farm boy. I work in Williston, North Dakota. If you have ever heard of that place. If you did not, I'm going to put it on a map right here. It's far away from everything in this world. I was afraid that I'll be one of the dumbest people in a class and I decided to pre-educate myself. So what I did, I've spent about six months on learning things on my own, watching YouTube videos, just googling and researching what is QA, how is it working, who are those people who are doing it. And I was amazed when I've actually joined the course, I realized that instead of being one of the dumbest and everyone being the programmers, I was one of the smartest in a class because I did prepare for the course. No one else did. And I was amazed. So my very first recommendation for you guys is to research the hell out of YouTube before you sign up for the course. Same thing applies for the job. When you get your first job or a second job, doesn't matter. Research about that company as much as possible. That actually applies for the interview. When you go for the first interview, you should also research about the company as much as possible so you could talk to them in their language. So if you guys are planning to become a QA engineer soon or not soon, I would still recommend you to start learning things on your own about a QA so you would be ahead of the game when you join the course. And what I did in the past, I have recorded a video, link for which I'm going to leave in one of those corners, where I have shared steps of self-education. What do you have to learn in, in order to become a QA engineer on your own? Honestly, it's going to be very challenging and probably 1,000 people will be able to do it on your own, but feel free to do so if you are capable of it. I just know that most people do need the mentor and that's exactly why I am here. And for those who know that, for those who are planning to sign up for the course, what I did, I have, I have stacked up list of links, books, and articles, so you could sign up for the course way before the game. And you could go step by step through the pre-education materials that I have prepared for you, that I have used during my days and put them in the good looking list so you could easily navigate through it and get ready for the course. And by the way, for those who are planning to do so, I'm offering 10% discount if you sign up one month in advance. 
And if you look at the price that we have on a website, you could save up to $500 with that, just FYI. Now let's talk about during a course or at the job. What can you actually do to become the best student or the best QA engineer in a company? Number one and the most important thing ever, you should know how to ask questions. You don't simply throw the message in the chat, hey, I don't understand anything, can someone help me? This is a red flag. I was thinking where do I put my hands. This is a red flag, honestly. Because as the QA mentor, I'll be like, okay, that person is a little bit hysteric, if I can say it that way. Or that person is very emotional. As the QA engineer, you need to understand that emotions will not help you. You need to logically think how to ask questions in a right way. And the same thing applies for the job places. When you work in a company and you don't clearly ask messages, you ask very vague questions such as, hey, how does it work? I cannot understand it. That doesn't work. You should ask specific questions so people will be like, okay, this guy is or a girl is digging into that problem. Looks like the problem was specified, the screenshot was added, and maybe even a log was added. So me as the professional, QA engineer or a mentor, I'll be like, okay, I want to help that person right away. And it's not like I will not help you if you will not ask questions in the right way as the QA mentor. But for QA engineers, it is very recommended to be an engineer, to be specific, to ask questions in a very direct way. So don't ask vague questions, ask specific questions such as, hey, I'm working on this problem or I'm seeing this error message on this page. Does anyone know why am I getting it? That is a very direct question and I'll be more than glad to give you a direct answer. But if you're saying, I don't know what's happening, nothing works. I'm like, what's happening? What doesn't work? I'm not getting you. Just, get, just specify the adder that you're getting and I'll be more than glad to help you out. Second of all, it's not only about a quality of messages or questions, it's also about a quantity of messages. During the education or whenever you get your first job, don't be shy, that's the red flag. I know some of you guys are shy, but you have to step out of your comfort zone because when you're shy, when you're not asking questions, you might be assuming things. You might be assuming, hey, that's probably the way it should be done. I will not ask questions because I will look dumb. No, you will never, never look, look dumb. dumb. You'll actually look dumb if you will assume instead of asking questions. And by the way, those who are asking the most questions in our QA bootcamp, which is called Cognify, usually are those who are getting job offers first. And you can even see the video link that I'm going to add in one of the corners with Arthur. He is the guy who asked demo questions in every single group. And he is the guy who got the job offer about two months before he finished the course. So three months after he started the education, he already had a job offer. That's amazing, isn't it? So make sure you ask a lot of questions. Before you actually ask a lot of questions, what you have to do is your own research. If you're facing an issue, make sure to research the hell out of it so you could find an answer on your own. When you find an answer on your own, you will remember it in a much better way than someone will simply give you an answer. Doing your own research when you're going through the bootcamp will mean that you will learn much more in a much higher quality way. I'm giving you the basics during the course. I'm giving you enough information so you could get the job. But I want you guys to do your own research and bring your own ideas aside of that. 10 years ago, once again, when I took a bootcamp, I would not go partying with my friends, with my classmates. I would study, I would work out, I would eat, I would sleep, I would research the hell out of all the topics that we did go throughout the class. People would take only what course gave them. And it's amazing, it was enough for most people to get a job. But I got a job as one of the first students in the class. And I was making much more money than most people in my class. And that was for the one simple reason. I did spend a lot of time on researching. And when I would go for an interview, I could discuss topics that they did not teach us in school. I could talk more in depth about advanced topics that, once again, they also taught us or even did not teach us in school. And I would highly recommend you guys to also do your own research before you sign up for the course or before you start the job. This has also helped me a lot to become a senior QA engineer. 
senior QA automation engineer, lead manager, and a senior engineering manager of SDAT. You know how? Well, that was simple. I was researching a lot. Whenever I would have a topic to dig into, whenever there would be something new for me to learn, I would research the hell out of it. You know what? I'll tell you something that I should probably have not told anyone, but it's only between me and you. When I was working as the K automation engineer, I once got the challenge from my manager. That guy did not like me. And he told me that, you know, here's the, here is a task for you for the next month. He told me to do something that I have never done before in my life. And we had no one in the company that would, would, would have done the same thing. You know what I did? I took it as the challenge. I researched it. I got stuck a lot of times. I would stay awake until 2 a.m. And I actually hired people abroad to help me with those questions. I would find, I would find a specialist online who have gone through those questions or those problems before because there was no one in my company who could simply help me. And myself, I was not able to figure it out. So I've hired a person to get through a specific problem. That person helped me out. I got through the problem and then I was building up momentum after that on my own. And I did make it happen. I did finish the project that that guy gave me. So this was a quick motivation for you guys and an example of what doing research could mean even when you have a job, not even when you are studying and how it helped me to grow as fast as you can see on my LinkedIn profile link to which you can also find right below this video. Lately, we do get a lot of calls from students or from people on YouTube who saw us and who already finished other courses or other boot camps and they were not completely satisfied. Some of them said that they were not able to talk to mentors live during the webinars. They could only send the messages in the chat and they would hope that those questions would be answered. Some of the people said that the mentor did not even show the face during the webinar. Some people said that they were not able to see who are those students on the other side of the screen in a Zoom call. They would only work on their own and they would ask mentors direct questions. There would be no one to sync with except the mentor. And that sucks in my opinion. And we take different approach at Cognify. We make sure that people can sync together we meet and greet everyone. We allow everyone to talk live during the webinars, not only to send messages. We make sure that people sync together. We make sure that you find your body. We make sure that you guys are jumping on the calls separately from our live webinars so you could discuss materials. That's exactly what I did 10 years ago when I went for the bootcamp. That was actually on-site bootcamp. And after every single, not webinar, but study day, I would grab people. I would take them all to Starbucks. I would gather them, buy them a coffee and a donut, and I would discuss everything. What are the test cases? What are the user stories? How do you see them? How do you visualize them? How do they look like in the startups? And people would throw different ideas. There were some people who worked in the startups before, and they would say things that I did not even think about before. So that was hyper helpful to get a complete understanding because sometimes mentors would not be able to answer or they would be rushing through the webinars. It's the same thing as you would study with your friend. You would jump on a call and you would discuss materials with your friend, right? Whenever you go for any bootcamp, any course, make sure that you find a friend in that course and you become a buddy of someone and you guys would jump on a calls on a daily basis because you can help with each other in English, you can help with each other with the JavaScript, we can help with each other with the interview preparation, which is one of the most important things that you have to get prepared for when you are going through the course. When you are in the job space, when you got a job offer and you are in an office or virtually working with someone, make sure to get a lot of connections. Make sure to be a friendly person and become a friend of QA engineers, dev, designers, product managers. Doesn't really matter. Get as many friends as possible. That increases or expands your network. In the future, when those people will switch the job and they will, trust me, and they will get a notification that their company is looking for a QA engineer and they'll be like, I remember Sergi, he is the cool guy that used to work with me. Let me recommend him. Let me actually ask him if he wants to change his job because maybe he can make more money. And they will reach out to you. So 
make sure to use the network. Network is one of the most powerful things in a job search. Trust me. So I highly encourage you guys to make sure that you bring your buddy or you bring your friend or you actually find a friend in a course. And that's exactly why I actually give 25% off if you guys come together. If you sign up for a course and if you bring a friend or you just bring a random person who wanted to sign up for the course and you say it's your friend, you both get 25% off, which is pretty much a $1,000. Just FYI. So there's one more thing you can do during the course to be, to be the best student. You can simply follow our guidelines. This is something very basic. You might even laugh like, why are you even saying that? Most people don't. Most people simply don't follow the guidelines. Most people simply don't do the one tiny magic thing that takes about a day to do so that increases your chances to get a job by about 40%. That's insane. I've, I've been recommending most people from who finish our school to do that thing. You know how many people did so far? Two or three. That's it. And those people got jobs. Whichever you bootcamp you pick, doesn't matter if it's ours or not, make sure to follow the guidelines of your mentors because they are there for some reason. So make sure to utilize their knowledge that you are actually paying for or are planning to pay for. Alrighty, and the last part. What do you gotta do after you finish the course or after you are done with your job? One of the first things that I recommend to everyone is for those who are in the boot camps, actually in our boot camp, is to join our monthly webinars during which we discuss a lot of things. We discuss improvements in a job search, improvements in the strategies, we discuss, we share more interview questions. We discuss how did people get the job and what questions did they receive. And also during those webinars, once per month for all the graduates forever. It's like, just like a lifetime membership. Sometimes I share new technologies or share new topics that I have recently started teaching. So if you were our students in the past, you will still learn things that I'm teaching new students. Same thing applies for the people who are done with the job. Whenever you're done with your job, whenever you're switching the job or you're laid off, after that, I would still recommend you to sync with your previous workers, whoever were your friends. Get them for a coffee or send them a message once in a while, ask them how they're doing. This will one more time improve or expand your network. And in the future, when that guy will hear about new position open up in our company, they will reach out to you. Trust me, if you are a good friend of theirs. And you can do also the same thing for them. Whenever you hear about a new position in your company for a dev designer or a product manager, whoever your friends are, make sure to refer them. Number one, you might make money out of it. Number two, you might help the person who will be thankful to you and in the future, that person will help you out in the same way as you have helped them. And the last thing, I'm still a friend of one, some of the people that I was when I got my second job offer. I worked with them about eight or nine years ago. And still, sometimes one of them will celebrate a birthday in Los Angeles. And guess who they're going to invite? They're going to invite me and their co-workers. We're still a group of friends. And I have referred two of them, they got job offer and I got bonuses. I made $2,000 of one of them and $5,000 of another one. Because he was going for a director position of the QA director. Actually, he was my director within the last few years. Now it is the time for you guys to leave a comment below and tell me how thankful you are for all these tricks. Or also tell me if they sucked and you already knew most of them. I'm very open to negative feedback as well as the positive feedback, as long as you leave it in the form of the comment below. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you next week.